You know how Kurt Russell's kind of a sarcastic asshole and always acts like he's out of breath in his upper chest. Like, Jesus Christ, Mary Christopher, what is wrong with you, Clarissa? Why are you in my backyard? <laughs> I don't know. It's, he's acting like Gordon McGibbons, if I'm going to be honest. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so he could be in this Expendables movie and, uh, it, you know, because he doesn't, he didn't want to do it and he said it was kind of juvenile. Well, he can just be the guy who drives in the big old armored, like, off-road semi-truck with multiple wheels like their portable man vehicle their man vehicles they've like put up like lights and everything that you can have and like multiple trailers for all your tools so he pulls in and he has all the different stuff the grenade launchers and all their shit in it and then he just makes fun of them before you know each mission operation and gives them their stuff <laughs> definitely he like pushes buttons and then they're like bikes come down you know like ATVs out of the back of the semi you know exactly and he just uh, phones it all in, baby. Yeah, he just phones it in. He's in and it makes fun of him. Because uh, I know that's what you like doing, Curdy. Okay, so Domino, in order to assemble his second satellite, he's taking up, uh, you know, like, it's got, like, you know, two big balloons to either side with strings and then a central blimp area. So he's raising it all up with special ethereum gas up to, you know, the level of the... Uh, where the satellites uh, passing, you know, in space overhead, and um, so then he's gonna set up a second satellite there. So what happens is uh, Sylvester Stallone, Barney Ross, and Lee Christmas, Jason Statham, they have to take a two seater jet up uh, and put it on autopilot, and then eject right as they're hitting space, and then they get shot up a little bit as the jet, you know, starts to go back down. And then they, like, you know, land against the blimp, and they have to, like, you know, magnetically hold on to it, you know, as they, like, get flipped up, uh, like, from the force of going upwards up the side of the blimp. And then they, like, land on the other side of the gangplank along the top of it, you know, where, like, Mr., uh, you know, bad guy's got his, you know, moon apparatus breather on his face, you know, just like it's uh, Avatar all over again. And then, um... Uh, Jason Statham's an asshole, so, uh, you know, his number one, the bad guy's number one, you know, fighter woman with two, with two, uh, batons that are, uh, you know, electrified, well, you know, she's fighting Jason Statham, and he's, like, blocking with his body armor, and then, like, she's got, like, the case of jewels, you know? That, like, they're trying to fit the final jewel of into the secondary satellite, you know, that they're next to. So, like, you know, there's, like, the evil technician guy who's, like, working as they're, like, trying to get to him to stop him, you know, with Domino and the woman f between them. So then, um, uh, Jason Statham's such an asshole that the, um, jewel case gets knocked over the edge and is falling down into the atmosphere. So he just jumps off after it because, you know, he, he likes jewels. So then Sylvester Stallone is uh, up there alone because, you know, the woman, he, Jason Statham, you know, finally, you know, gets around to where the uh, um, laser, uh, not laser, you know, electric baton has got her by the neck and then he breaks her neck, you know, cause she's super evil with the, with the stun as it shocks her. But then her, her convulsing foot, you know, kicks the case with the, you know, one of the crystals, you know, off of the edge of the, uh, whole scenario. So then, uh, Barney's like, oh no, I'm up here alone. So then, um, He's just fighting, you know, his old uh, nemesis as, like, um, the balloon that they're on is, like, slowly starting to break loose from the satellite and drift into outer space, you know? So then, like, they're both, like, punching and kicking each other. Um, then, like, um, it's revealed that, like, he's got, like... Um, 
Bane like, you know, ports where he's been putting in his um, you know, like gas to keep his body energized, the bad guy for no reason, you know. So like uh Sylvester Stallone starts punching him in the into the back where by the kidneys where he's got his injector ports in his suit. You know, and then the guy's all injured, and he's all like, oh, and he, like, falls to the ground, you know, after he's been beating up Sylvester Stallone forever. Then the guy, you know, pulls out his sizzle knife, and he goes to explode the whole blimp as Sylvester Stallone, he goes, oh, no, as he's gonna, you know, commit suicide. So then he stabs it into the blimp, and so Sylvester Stallone, he uh, grabs a piece of, like, satellite, that's like, um, you know, being assembled like the, like a, a cone dish area. And he like jumps and like shields himself with it as he gets it blasted, you know, off of the blimp, you know, off of the direction, uh, across the atmosphere of the planet, you know, with his, uh, advanced space deflection gear on, you know. So then, uh, he's being blasted and he's, you know, skipping across the atmosphere, you know, boom, 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 flipping over and over along the, the ionosphere of green, you know, of the planet. So then, um, let's see here. Um, then the, uh, extra drone that, um, the bad guy has, uh, it's auto shows up because he stole the bad guys, you know, s controlling mechanism, you know, little like tablet thing that he puts on his wrist. So then the drone shows up that the guy was going to use to escape and he, you know, lays out as the drone comes alongside as he's flying along space and it like comes in overhead and like scoops down with two big arms on either side and grabs his body and slowly slows his fall and like he goes inside of it and it takes down into the atmosphere of the earth you know yeah good stuff you need a scene where there's like you know five different jewels right uh they were all from different places on the planet that are like super condensed and deep mines so you like have like Five different guys with different ethnicities, you know, who are like deep miners, you know, who look all sexy, rugged, you know, but also whatever ethnicity perfectly. You got to find those guys, those models and use them. So then it's like slotted, like as whoever's talking about, you know, how the gems are from the deepest place ever. And like when uh, he's mentioning it, um, talking a little bit about it, uh, the main character, Stallone. Then you cut to all those guys, you know, finding the, the gem in different ways. You know, some of them actually pickaxe it because, get real, the reason why those gems are so valuable is because there's guys that go all the way down there and can survive the pressure they mine down there. Then they find the rifts in the earth where the pressure scrunched, you know, and plates shifted. And it's, the, well, the gems are super, super compressed. And get real again. Those gems were however big, and they're just squashed right down to size. You know what I'm saying? Just squanch it, okay? So those are how powerful the gems are that we're talking about that they were going to use in the laser ray. Furthermore, the it's like a cube box that inside has like a crystal circular thing that's containing the gems in a line. When like it's like crystalline matrix boards on each level of the gems. So the laser energy is going to like blast from the sun from like what it picks up from the sun through those and be like concentrated with all the colors of the um, different gems with all that compressed energy already in them to like create a deadly laser that can zap through any surface was the point, right? So that can carry over for further uses in the series, of course, those gems, because he secretly, when he grabs onto the satellite and blasts away Stallone, then he dismantles before he hits, you know, the actual green ionosphere and rolls along it, you know. He dismantles that mega chip, you know, and puts it in his little satchel thing. So then, like, he reveals at the end of the movie is the final scene that he's like, and they're all complaining, they're all like, man, you went up there to do that and you didn't even get it. And then he, like, pulls it out and he's like, see, I wouldn't let you guys down. And that's the end of the movie, because that's how they always end those movies. I don't know. You know, Strong Bad and Homestar Runner, 
They have Whittle Boato that always makes Homestar Runner cry because he lost all but one leg. Well, I was thinking, we need a real tearjerker that's still family friendly. So, uh, for the new Stallone movie where he's coming out of retirement, um, you know, he has a bunch of his joints replaced. He's probably going to have to get, like, Palmer replacements for the metal ball joints he has so that then his body can grow, naturalize it, you know, like citrus polymer. It's, you know, advancements have been made. Um, he'll have to do that eventually. I don't know what his plan for that is. But besides for that, just this concept that, like, he's got, like, a robo-dog in the plot, so then whatever happens to him has happened to this dog, like, it, it, we should have, like, but we go silly further, like, it loses its front legs in a bomb blast or something, shielding someone, and then they put on, like, robo legs, and, like, you know, it can have, like, it, it's a, like a big dog, and it can have, like, you know, maybe some, like, you know, little gun attachments, you know, so it can, like, laser target with, like, its robo aim eye, you know, for little kids, and, like, shoot stuff, you know, super robo dog, I don't know, it seems pretty awesome to me, I don't know, it could, it could come out of retirement too, you know.